master of mindfulness in Arabic project, which we call Mia. And um, I'm a psychotherapist. I've been coming from a long journey in the body-oriented psychotherapy and um, trauma therapy. But, uh, out of that came through my work with refugees in Turkey and um, um, the work that I did in South Africa and Ireland in a group that Nadia and Mir connected to, the Toa group. We decided that it would be very good to translate to Arabic all of the mindfulness uh, information and with a trauma-informed, trauma-focused uh, angle to it so that we are giving it in very small amounts and is also cultural sensitive. My name is Nadia. Uh, I'm a Palestinian Israeli. I'm, I start uh, my first touch with mindfulness a few years ago when I met Judita in a project that we did together uh, with uh, Nonviolence Communication. Um, I come from a education, a special education background, alternative medicine and uh, self-awareness and meditation. Um, also, uh, since uh, Mia start, I start as a volunteer, uh, translating from English to Arabic or from Hebrew to Arabic. Uh, and less than a month, I'm uh, the project manager <laughs> uh, with the support of Judita and Ariel and a lot, all the team that work in uh, this issue. Um, what I see that important uh, that to bring this uh, project and to put it online as soon as possible because I see how much it's important to bring uh, even a little bit of support and what I see from this project could be big support not only a little bit of support to uh, refugees especially uh, as, uh, as a daughter of refugees and I know what it is to be a refugee and uh, the process that you need to pass uh, with yourself and to hear your uh, wounds and to support others, not only for yourself. And from place, I really would like to see it soon. And uh, as Judita said, and also uh, uh, to found, uh, to, to make uh, the course for trained trainers, to find people that they can support in their own language, especially in Arabic. Yeah, from my work in field and as a one that come from the Arabic culture, I see how much uh, it's important to bring it in their mother language. This is um, uh, brings such a lot of ease to connect uh, with their selves and their feelings. Yeah. One more thing that I would like really to uh, um, put an emphasis on is that we are an international team and um, we have people in Turkey and people in London and people in Iraq and people from the West Bank um, that are supporting us and even we had a, a connection now and a volunteer from Gaza. That, so the, the interest is really multinational and uh, the need is probably there. This MIA, the Mindfulness in Arabic uh, project actually stemmed out of another project that we did uh, Nadia, Nizam, and me from uh, for cross-cultural women groups, and um, that was a delightful meeting of cultures and faiths. And we brought in nonviolent communication, mindfulness, and also trauma of emotional skills, like first aid emotional skills. And uh, in those groups. Uh, we felt that there was uh, coming together, there was an understanding because we came back to the basic ingredients of our fears here actually and uh, went beyond some um, belief systems about the politics actually, not belief systems of the faith. And it's sort of like, oh wow, this is, these are sort of like shared experiences in the humanity, you know as human beings, as women, and uh, that was very, that was very clear. So I think that also this work sort of like clarifies that in a way, it brings it back to the, you know, our organism, our nervous system. Both of us, we are from different backgrounds and we are sitting together in, in such a crazy place that uh, what uh, the world know that we live in a conflict and in a war, uh, I just 
grow up in a uh, with a wonderful mom uh, that she was trauma traumatized traumatized by the war and uh, home what I learned that uh, we respect and value each person as a human being and not because of his background if he's a Muslim Christian or Jewish or whatever he is or, or any culture that he come we respect him as a human being first and this is something that I grew up with it uh, and never I heard my mom talking about the war or the stories or what's happened in 48 to my family with anger she always talked about it with patient and she said this is the story this is what happened and this is you have to know about it but you have to live right now you have to move in in your life and for me to sit here with Judita is something normal for me and I think with mindfulness and uh, nonviolence communication we can bring a lot of healing to person that had trauma and especially from this place that yes it's live in a conflict that we have this experience of our own home of our own story that it could work and yes there is a process of healing and yeah. it's possible and we've been working along for maybe two or three years already so you know and we went through quite a lot of terrorist attacks and the war in Gaza and and we had to speak about it together between us as well so that we can continue to work together yes and still respect each other and that's really yes, it's yeah. not matter which uh, political ideas you have which political uh, uh, term you follow at the end we are human being and we treat each other as a human being and not as a Jewish and as Arab. I think that's where our political also yes. stem from. Yeah, and this is <laughs> we where really, the, we're really for human beings. Yes, to be for Dot. a human being <laughs> and not for Arabs or Jews or any other nationality, to be for a human being. Mm -hmm.